Good morning, everybody. Victor here. We just came out of beautiful Hillsborough Inlet, our home inlet in Pompano Beach, Florida. And it is freezing cold today for us South Floridians. As you guys see, we're bundled up. We got a beautiful sunny day. We're gonna catch some fish. So the first thing we gotta do is catch some baits. We're gonna be slow trolling these baits known as Speedos all day. So I have a chum bag in the water. We're not gonna spend too much time talking about the bait fishing today, but if you guys come over here, I got a hoop net in the water and I'm waiting for these Speedos to come up into that chum right now. So I'm waiting for those Speedos to swim right over this hoop net and then I'm gonna pull it up real quick. You wanna wait until they're right over that net and you're gonna pull it up. Gosh darn it, we only got one. Gotta you gotta, somewhere. yeah, like Brooke says, you gotta start somewhere. Surprise at the end of the road. Look at that juicy, chunky, beautiful bait. This is what we want. And see how they're on top like this? This is one you're gonna get them. Good. Oh, Dennis. Only two again. Two is better than none, I suppose. If we could keep getting these three, two fish pulls, we're gonna have our baits of fish for the day. And we got a pesky file fish in here, which is not what you want. Look at this thing. It's a cool looking fish. It's a file fish. We got, I want to say like eight Speedos. We tried our hearts out to get those baits, but they just did not want to come close to the boat. It's just one of those tough days where you got to have a good attitude. You got to put in the time and try to make something happen. So instead of wasting time all day and trying to catch baits, we're just going to fish the baits we have, which usually ends up being more than enough. So nice, juicy Speedo. And I'm going to show you how I hook it up. Triple hook rig right here. We're going to go one, treble hook right here in the nose okay and then I got actually sliding rig so what that means is this treble hook slides right here which makes it nice so I can put it right where I want it in that speedo okay now Brooke's gonna put the boat in gear and the name of the game is we're gonna slow troll these guys all day long so just in idle uh, nothing faster because if you go too fast it's gonna drag the baits and it'll actually drown them so now I'm letting out the far bait. I'm gonna set it back like 100, 150 feet. It's a hammerhead, huh? Man, that thing's flying. Oh, man. He came in hot, huh? Let's see if we can get him close to the boat. Oh, he's huge! Rook, rook, rook. Oh, Dennis, get this, watch this. Look, look, look. So I'm reeling the speedo in and there's a hammerhead. Oh, he got it. Oh, he didn't get it. Watch this. Let's get him right next to the boat. Oh my gosh. That is so sick. <laughs> wow, look at how agile they are. Look at this. He's literally hitting his hammer on the boat. You see how we can do a complete 360? He's like, come on guys, give me my food. Oh, shoot, he got it that time. He was kind of cute like a dog just spinning around. That hammerhead wanted the speedo real bad. He just demolished it, huh? It's always really cool seeing those fish. So if you guys have watched the channel for a long time, I actually grew up shark fishing and nothing got me more excited than one of those fish right there, a big hammerhead. When I used to fish the pier, the main thing we would like to do is shark fish. And that was the primary target. Pound for pound, there's no harder fighting animal than a hammerhead shark. Always have my respect. That is one shark I never mind seeing offshore. So we are still trolling. Instead of being shallow, we're gonna go deep. It's kind of crazy to think how much of my life I have shared with you guys over the years. You know, my engagement was on YouTube. You guys have seen my parents, Brooke's parents. And it's kind of crazy to think how much information is out there on the web about us. And as a YouTuber, content creator, my livelihood depends on making videos. 
and the thought of my account getting hacked is frightening and it's something I never really thought about until now. As a precaution, I wanted to prevent any possibilities of getting hacked and that's where I discovered today's video sponsor, Aura. If you guys have ever Googled your name, it's creepy how much information is out there. Data brokers sell your information to spammers, scammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Things like your name, home address, email, health records, it's all out there. So what I like about Aura is it shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt out requests for me. Cleaning up my information helps reduce the amount of spam I get and I don't know about you but I hate spam calls. Aura also protects me from hackers who could use this information to help access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. It's really easy to set up so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. To stop data brokers from exposing your personal information, go to aura.com slash landshark to get a 14 day free trial and see how how much of your information is being sold. Big thank you once again to Aura for sponsoring today's video. And as you guys see, it got a little bit bumpier here. Um, we just came out and there's a really nice color change. We're in like 280 feet of water and that swell, this time of year when we get these cold fronts, the swell gets really big the further out you get because the west wind is shielded um, by the land. But out here, I mean, you got some solid four or five foot rollers. It's not choppy but you can just feel the boat going up and down. I love the winter. Oh, that's all. There we go, there we go. Stay glued. What do we got? This one was on the down rod, on the down rigger. Speedo just got eight. There's some shallow wrecks here in Pompano and we've just been going kind of from wreck to wreck. Brooke's been driving us. Yeah, we got a nice fish on right now. You know, it's crazy. The last time we came out here, we had a really good day and we had all that by like noon and then it completely shut off. It's like our boy Tanner said recently, he said, sometimes you're the bug and sometimes you're the windshield. Today, it felt like we were the bug. I think it's an amberjack because it's kind of spinning down there and staying straight up and down. Or a king. It's a king? Yeah, it's a king. It's a foul hook kingfish. That's why he was fighting that way. You want me to gaff it, right? Yeah. Foul hook kingfish. Nice job, Brookie. There we go. First fish of the day in the boat. A kingfish. It's barely hooked. These two hooks here, well, I guess this one's in a little bit. You want to show Vic? Look, only one. Look, look, that. you don't even have to use it. Look at how, wow. see how? That's why you got to fight these fish with light drag. They could come out so dang easily. This is not even that big of a kingfish. I'd say he's six pounds and you guys saw the size of that bait. They use that mouth, they come up, they cut that speedo by the tail. Now that speedo's immobile and then he comes back and just eats it in chunks and just takes his time with it. And that was our last live bait. You guys, yesterday was a rough day, but I'm coming into today with a very positive attitude. I was pretty down in the dumps, did not catch much, but you know what? We're gonna take advantage of this beautiful weather we have in the winter time. It's another sunny, flat, calm day here in Hillsborough Beach. We got the lighthouse right there, absolutely gorgeous. I still think it's one of the prettiest places we ever fish is just back home. That view going out the inlet is just unbeatable. So. We're not gonna waste our time with bait today. I actually bought some goggle eye in the live well. We're gonna head out the inlet and we're gonna go straight to fishing. We'll see you out there. Look at, just look at this live well real quick. Those are a bait fish known as a goggle eye. As you can see, you see that big old eyeball? My good buddy, Brian Fangler, caught these last night. He actually sells bait in South Florida and these guys are pretty nocturnal. They don't really eat during the day, so you gotta be up in the wee hours of the night to catch them. And that's how we're gonna rig it up. Just a simple stinger rig. Now what we're gonna do today is slow troll like we did yesterday. These things that we have in the live bowl right now, $120 a dozen. The reason for that is like I said, they're nocturnal. You have to basically catch them as the sun goes down and those goggle eye fishermen will be up all night till 6 a.m. They'll go out there at 6 p.m. It's a lucrative business, but it's also really tiring on the body. And people wonder why they cost so much. It's because of that right there. You have to be a madman to sell a gog life for a living. It's, it takes a toll on you. But they're very good little baits and they're really hardy. Oh, 
buddy. Do you see he grabbed him with his talons? Do you see that? Dude, an osprey just grabbed my goggle eye with his talons. I'm not even mad about it. Oh, oh. This is on. This is on. Oh my gosh. Sail, sail, sail. Nice sailfish on. Ah, oh, he's charging. These fish are so crazy acrobatic. Guys, look at that line sing. Woo! Whoa! This thing is freaking out. All right, here we go. That's exactly what we wanted. Whenever we get these cold fronts like this, you always feel like the sailfish are going to be around and we finally hooked up to one. So sailfish, in terms of like raw fighting power, what we catch out here, any billfish is going to be the strongest pound for pound. You guys will see when we get a boat side, they have this huge fork tail. And when you fight him from a standstill boat, you can fight him for a long time. So once we get this other line cleared up, we'll actually chase him. Because um, you don't want it to die. And you don't really fight fish from a standstill boat, you usually chase them down. Right here. We got him boat side. Burke's got the GoPro underwater trying to just get some cool underwater footage of him. Muy necesito. When dealing with sailfish, I've grabbed him many a times barehanded. Doesn't feel good. No need to be a macho man. Put some gloves on to grab that bill. All right. Okay, well, I got him right here. I got him right here. Oh. So I got the pliers. And now we're just gonna take this little treble hook out. You guys see it? Right there. Got it. Treble hook's out, now Brooke's gonna put the boat in gear. So the most important thing, when you catch a sailfish, or any type of billfish, is they usually fight themselves to a lot of exhaustion. So Brooke's got the boat in gear. I have his head in the water. Just take two to three minutes and revive him and you'll see when he gets his color back. Like this guy right here is all lit up beautifully. Hasn't lost too much color. He's gonna be good for a nice release. So we've had the boat in gear for about three minutes. Just gonna let him go and he'll swim off nice and strong. We got it done. We got the first fish in the boat. Or the first fish to the boat. Oh, yeah, that rod. That rod just got hit. So we've been trolling inside, in and out of the reef, between the first and second reef, and the down rod finally got hit. It's been really inactive the last two days. Finally some love for the down rod. All the rods that you guys actually see on the boat today, these are all Conley fishing rods. I've been using Conley's rods for, shoot, I want to say like six years now. He's a local guy out of Palm Beach, real good friend of mine, makes some amazing offshore gear. Um, you guys can check them out, linked below. You can actually save a little money, use my coupon code LANDSHARK. Older subscribers know I've been using his stuff for a long time. I'm Bajak! Man, I gotta tighten my drag. Holy moly, that's for sure. <laughs> Beautiful little amberjack right there. Definitely needed to tighten my drag on that reel. <laughs> but um, this guy's too small to keep anyway, so we're gonna let him go. Maldives, they catch giant shellfish without hooks. How do you do that? I don't know, but he said he's done it before. Do you harpoon them? Tom will personally drive all the way from Ohio just to eat at your restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save you a spot. You guys, we're on TikTok. Look, we're filming a YouTube video as we're doing a TikTok live. Dennis and I were checking our lines and a cuda came right up as we were tangled and a cuda came and ate our goggle eye. You have no idea how happy I am to see this cuda. 
We've been looking for this fish for two days now. Been trying to do a barracuda catch and cook and it hasn't happened till now. Come on, buddy. There it is. Woo! <laughs> Come on, where's the excitement? It's the first fish we've caught in a while. So I'm keeping them right over the side of the boat because I forgot barracudas in Florida now actually have regulation. They never used to be regulated. So we got to make sure he's legal. Yeah. All right, there's Mr. Barracuda. Where's the TikTok live fam at? Whoa! Jesus! <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> at least you guys see how a fishing video is filmed now. Barracudas, for some reason, I don't know why, smell really bad when you first catch them. But when you fillet them, it is a completely different story. So there she is. Big stinky right there. We're actually gonna take this guy home and eat it. I'm gonna do a barracuda catch and cook. And the cool thing about these fish, if you guys look, every single barracuda has the exact same tooth on the top of their mouth. And it actually perfectly lodges into like a little socket on the bottom of their jaw. Um, real neat. They don't really have the sharpest teeth. It's more like tearing. You can always tell when a barracuda eats her bait. <gasps> what is our battery percentage? Look that? at the back rod too. Oh, we're good for a little while. Oh, bottom rod, bottom rod. Bottom rod, bottom oh, rod. Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah, this is on. There we go. So this was on the uh, makeshift downrigger with a live goggle eye. All our baits started getting really nervous. We're shallow. We're like over the reef in like 50 feet of water right now. Come on, you little stinker. All right, so check it out. It was amberjack number two of the day. And like I said, they fight a lot harder because we're fighting them with pretty loose drag. Because if you're fighting something like a kingfish, you don't want to have a lot of heat on them because your hook's going to pull. Amberjacks have real hard mouths, but kingfish have got soft mouths, so I was fighting them with lighter drag. But still a cool fish to catch. Undersized, so we're going to let them go. Well, there's something just got All right, guys, we just hooked up on that far rod um, right on this color change right here, and it looks like it's going to be a little peanut dolphin. Yeah, he's legal. Someone said say it. Fish on. Fish on! <laughs> oh, yeah. it's legal? Yeah. Ready? Watch out. Woo! There it is. What What the is that? Heck? I have He's got, like, long hair. Oh, is he in, is he wrapped in braid? No. Like look. someone else's braid? No, look. What He's got is that? weird. You guys, I have never, ever, ever in my entire life. Comment down below if you've seen this. It's like some type of weird growth. Maybe it's some type of parasite or something. I don't know. Very strange. But gorgeous fish. You see the colors changing before your eyes. All that blue, yellow, green. You know, I'm excited why we caught this because we're gonna be able to compare it to the taste of the barracuda side by side. I'm just gonna bleed this guy and pull it in the cooler, but look at all that weird growth on him. You guys comment below if you've ever seen it because I have never seen it in my life. Dark, oh, my, small my right there. Where? Small my right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's oh, literally yeah. right there. Get him on the bay rod. Oh, oh, he's on it, he's on it. He got wow. it. Wow. <laughs> that was awesome. On the little rod. Look how close to the beach we are, guys. That close to the beach, and we're catching mahi. I bet you he's a keeper. All right, so Brooke and Dennis spotted a little mahi out of the corner of their eye, and we had the little rod out. We had this little rod with a little bucktail jig, tossed it out, and mahi pounced right on it. This is why Florida is so cool. You could catch mahi literally a mile off the beach. He's going to be a keeper, too. Yep. So this is six pound test. You want me to net it? Yeah. Did not fight very much. Look at the little blue tips. Oh gosh. On. At the same time. Oh, Whoa! Did you see that? <laughs> Can work. <laughs> Woo! Come on, Brooke. Matrix it. <laughs> All right. Another little mahi. He's a keeper. I mean, he'll eat. He'll eat just as good as a big mahi. 
All right, so I set a time limit that we are only gonna fish till two. It's gonna be really interesting because I'm gonna cook the mahi as well as the kuda tonight for dinner. I'll see you guys there. So this right here is a barracuda. And it is one of the most feared and villainized fish, I would say, in the ocean. Even in Finding Nemo, it was vilified, right? A lot of people have this false notion that these are trash fish because when you first catch a barracuda, I don't know why, but they have a very distinct bad smell, almost as if like, you know, don't eat me. But they are actually delicious. They have very white meat and people all around the world eat them. It's not as common in the US, but if you go to any Caribbean country or any island country, it is a staple among islanders. And I'm gonna tell you two reasons people don't like this fish. The first was the fact that they smell. Second, people think that this fish is ri uh, riddled with something called cigatera. So cigatera is a toxin and something that can poison you if you eat certain fish infected with it. It's, uh, I believe it's called like a dinoflagellate or something. It's a very small organism and it biomagnifies in the food chain. So big predatory fish, something like a barracuda, can have it. Doesn't mean they all do, but it's, it goes the same for snapper, grouper. Any big reef fish can have cigatera. If I take a look at this common sense, this is a small barracuda. It has not lived a very long life. So the older and bigger a fish is, the more chance it has to have accumulated this cigatera toxin. But out here, I don't know of anyone who's gotten cigatera. It's not medical advice, but it's really something common in the Bahamas and the islands. You need really clean water conditions, it was explained to me, to uh, support the life of cigatera. I've eaten barracuda out here dozens of times, nothing to be afraid of. So if you have a slow day of fishing, I'm telling you, you still want to have a good seafood dinner, do not be afraid of this fish. They look mean, they stink, but the end result, once you fillet these guys up, is really delicious, delicious seafood. So I'm filleting this up with our 8-inch Dextreme Max Flex knife, and they're pretty easy to fillet. They got a pretty gnarly rib cage, which we just went over. Get my knife on the other side of that backbone. Tilt that knife down. See, there's that rib cage that we kind of just glide over, right? Okay, there we go. Barracuda, filleted out. To the naked eye, you tell me that that looks like a bad fish. It's, I'm gonna fillet the mahi up next to show you guys side by side. There is no smell. It smells like fresh, delicious fish. Look at that. Not even a big bloodline. People are so dang fussy about this fish and they have no idea how delicious it is. I got the entire family coming over tonight for dinner and they will experience it for themselves and you guys can see the raw, um, unbiased reactions of what eating this fish is like. Dennis, have you ever had barracuda? Oh yeah. Yeah, you know. It's good, right? It is good. In a second, I'm gonna fillet the mahi. I don't know if I said this in the video, but mahi are actually, I believe, the fastest growing fish in the ocean. Get how small this fish is, and look at this. Already an egg-bearing female. I like to gut my mahi before I fillet them, because those guts are just so disgusting, you don't want to get them on your fillets. And I'm telling you, I've never seen that crazy growth on a dolphin ever before until this day. Very curious if any of you guys at home know what that's about. You guys can comment below because it beats me. Um, doesn't scare me in terms of eating it. I'm still going to eat the fish. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but it's just a wild thing in nature, you know. So we're filling up this little mahi. Still using the same knife. 8 inch max flex. Quick work. You guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark. People always talk about a good fish as being white. You tell me, which is lighter in color? That's mahi, 
That is the Barracuda. I would say this is fainter in color than this. So when I skin my mahi, I like to leave a little thin layer of meat because they have really thin skin and you don't want to pierce through it. And also, they got kind of a big bloodline system. So we uh, we'll leave a decent amount on that skin, just like that. Just a real thin layer, you know? Because see, that's very uh, big bloodline. And yeah, this is actually a keeper size mahi. If you guys are watching from a different part of the world, we get some bigger mahi, but I would say the majority of our fish are in that like 20 to 26 inch range. You know, they're not very big. This is a schoolie sized fish. Well, it looked great. Was there worms? No, did we oh, no out worms what it was? in. We did not. I asked the great people of YouTube to comment below, but there's one of those things. That's it. I'll see you guys at dinner. You got front row seats to the show. So, in the kitchen, we're gonna keep it simple. Barracuda, mahi, fish sandwiches. I've been on a big sandwich kick. And I wanna show you guys what I think is the best tartar sauce recipe. It's simple, it is only five ingredients, all right? Starting with dill pickles. And what I did is I patted them dry with a paper towel, because pickles release a lot of juice. So what you're gonna start by doing is is you want to mince them really fine, okay? So I'm gonna start by cutting them into small pieces, mincing them. Now I'm gonna go back around and I'm gonna mince this. You want it nice, little, fine chunks. So next up, minced onion. Once again, real fine. You don't want big chunks of uh, onion or pickle in your tartar sauce. When I first started fishing, I remember my aunt would take me on uh, a lot of charters in the Keys. And my go-to thing, like when I was first, you know, starting out fishing and, and eating fish, and I would order fish out at a restaurant, I always craved a mahi sandwich, especially when I was in the Keys. Um, something about a blackened mahi sandwich with the taste of tartar sauce on a good soft bun with like, you get the little bit of that taste of that blackened butter and some lemon juice was just like my favorite profile that like really got me just loving fish. And it's funny because my aunt, my dad's sister, she's the one who actually got me into fishing. Her and my little cousin, my dad, fun fact, does not like to fish. He would drop me off at the pier when I was a young lad at the Deerfield Beach Fishing Pier well first, before I was old enough to stay there, he would go there and read a book, buy me a pack of squid, and I'd be happy to catch anything. A blue runner, a mackerel, you know, every single fish was just, I'd be ecstatic for. Normally, I like to do about a half uh, mixture of sour cream to mayo, but unfortunately, I only have mayo, so we're gonna do just straight mayo for this one. Okay, so change of plans. Brooke just called her mom, who's coming over for dinner. She's got sour cream, so I'm not gonna do the full mayo. So five ingredients, I did not lie. And now, the secret to a good tartar sauce, a lot of black pepper. We're gonna wait to mix that until we get the sour cream. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. If you take a look at this tray, what do you see? All I see is fresh seafood, especially once it's mixed amongst itself. I can promise you, you can blindfold someone, serve them this fish, and they would not be able to tell the difference between the barracuda and the mahi. I mean, it's clear as day right here that there's not much of a difference in terms of the way they look. Chef Paul's black and seasoning. I think that Chef Paul's is the best black and seasoning you guys can put your hands on or get your hands on. We're gonna blacken our fish outside right here in the big saute pan. Going in with some avocado oil. And then to go with our fish sandwiches, we're gonna make a beautiful little salad. Chickpeas, so I got some onion, cucumber, uh, have grape tomatoes, some chickpeas. Gonna go in with the juice of an entire lemon. Just plain white sugar for some sweetness. And you know Vic's gotta do garlic powder. We did a TikTok live today, and someone commented, because we were talking about our favorite fish, and the guy goes, Vic likes anything with garlic on it, and that's true. Now, red wine vinegar, olive oil. 
And then just the basic pre-mixed Italian seasoning. You got some thyme in there, oregano, a um, bunch of other dried herbs. Salt, freshly cracked pepper. And then we're gonna go on with some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And now we mix all these beautiful flavors together. Woo! See, that's not burnt. That is perfectly blackened right there. So that's a piece of the mahi right there. This thicker piece right here, that's the barracuda. I'm not letting this stuff go to waste too. So I'm just gonna give our fish that had that first batch kind of a second life, dump a little bit of this blackened butter and oil on top of them. Brooke's mom came to the rescue, brought us some sour cream. Like I said, around equal parts of that sour cream to mayo mixture. If you can't see the freckles of all that black pepper, I'm telling you, you need to add more. You know we gotta go down with that tartar sauce. And that ciabatta bread is nice and thick and soft, so it soaks up all that tartar sauce. It's like the perfect bread to make a fish sandwich with. Okay, this is a piece of barracuda right here. Some of this butter leaf lettuce, good slice of tomato, some red onion, and that's all you need. Now you got your perfect fish sandwich, a little wedge of lemon, and you're good to go. You want me to make you one or you want to make one? I'll take that one. All right. Can I have that one? <laughs> when I heard barracuda, I'm like, man, I hope I get that one. Man, I'm so glad I grabbed this barracuda sandwich. It is delicious. I knew it was gonna be fresh, and Victor, he never cooks anything that isn't delicious, but I've had, you know, dolphin sandwiches plenty of times, and I'm sure they're delicious as well. But this barracuda, I'm glad I picked it. It's good. Wow. Barracuda sandwich, gone. Now I'm gonna go get me a piece of mahi. Do you see this behemoth? <laughs> I'm telling you, my favorite flavor. I'm not even gonna comment on the barracuda. I just see it as fresh fish, because that's all it is. Piece of fish, that blackened butter, the tartar sauce, tomato, all those flavors coming together under a nice little soft bread. Under one roof. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely never had a better fish sandwich, and um, the fact that it's fresh barracuda just makes it that much better, because everyone, uh, wanted to have their dolphin second just to get to try some barracuda because it's not as common Especially when you go to a restaurant. It's always black and dolphin. I wouldn't put anything above this fish sandwich for sure I'm enjoying my sandwich too. Everyone's right. Nothing wrong with barracuda. It's delicious uh, That salad's looking really good. Good job fit. Thank you. Good job. So I put Barracuda on my sandwich and then a piece of mahi on the side so I could try both of them and I would say the mahi doesn't have as much flavor as the barracuda does. The mahi is definitely a drier fish. And I feel like I say that every single time we do a video like this when we compare, compare mahi to something else. Like, mahi is sold, like every restaurant that you go to you can find mahi, you're never gonna find barracuda on a menu, yet the barracuda has more flavor. It's definitely not a trash fish, it's a delicious fish. Don't turn your nose up to it. One of the reasons you see mahi all over the world in restaurants and not things like barracuda is like I was telling you guys at the filet table. This fish has been vilified. It's like the villain of the sea. They're mean looking. They don't even look like a nice fish. They look like a fish that is bad, right? These crazy gnarly teeth. If you're a real fisherman and you've gotten to experience and eat in so many different types of seafood, hands down, way more flavor on the barracuda. So we caught a kingfish yesterday. We caught two mahi today. We had some blackfin tuna in the, fr in the fridge. We chose to eat this barracuda. I could have let that thing go, but I'd like to show you guys that this is a great fish. And especially on days where you get skunked and the ocean's slow, take home a barracuda. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Got lots of exciting stuff headed your way. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.